now that we've explored cost behavior and taken a look at break-even analysis, profit analysis, and the contribution format income statement, let's spend a few minutes looking at this in a graphical presentation. What I've done here is I've created two firms, Firm X and Firm Y, and these firms have different cost structures. So notice that Firm X has a $40 sales price per unit, $25 variable cost per unit, and that leaves it with a $15 contribution margin per unit. Taking a look at Firm Y, we have that same sales price of $40. However, we only have a $10 variable cost per unit, which leaves us with a contribution margin of $30. Also notice that Firm X has fixed cost of $18,000, while Firm Y has fixed cost of $30,000. Now what we're seeing here is a trade-off. And this is usually a trade-off between labor and automation, i.e. machinery. So just looking at these numbers, we can probably say that Firm Y is more automated than Firm X. They have higher fixed costs from that machinery and they've reduced their variable cost per unit by eliminating some of their direct labor. Firm X, however, has lower fixed costs, but higher variable costs per unit. So they probably have a higher amount of direct labor cost built into their cost structure. Let's take a look at the graph. This top line I've labeled total revenue. And the way I calculated that was I had a range of zero to 2,000 units sold. And I simply did some multiplication. So 2,000 times my $40 unit cost gave me this point at 80,000. So the uh, coordinates are 2,000, 80,000 on this top coordinate. And then, of course, if we sell zero units, we would have zero revenue. So that describes the total revenue line. This line, this horizontal line, is my total fixed cost line. And we see that comes right in at 18,000 for Firm X. The middle line is my total cost line. Now that includes fixed and variable costs. And look where it starts out. It starts out at 18,000. That's my fixed portion. And then it continues up at a slope. And that slope is $25 per unit. That's my variable portion. Now where these lines intersect is the break even point. And I've calculated the break-even point up here just to exemplify this. And if we look at this and follow it down, it winds up at the 1,200 unit level on the x-axis. Let's take a look at Firm Y. Okay, I calculated the lines the same way. And look, where that total revenue and total cost line meet, that's the break-even point. That makes sense, doesn't it? If total revenues are equal to total costs, then your net operating income is going to be zero. So I've got a 1,000-unit break-even point. There it is right there on the x-axis. And we can also see my break-even point in dollars of 40,000 winds up over here on the y-axis right at 40,000. 
Let's take a look at these triangles that are described by the total revenue and total cost line. We've got a triangle above the break-even point, and we call this triangle the area of profit. Below the break-even point, the triangle described by the total revenue and total cost line is called the area of loss. Now let's explore this. Beyond the break-even point of a thousand units, if I sell a thousand and one units, I'm going to have profit of thirty dollars. So for every unit that I sell above the break-even point, I get thirty dollars of additional profit. On the flip side, if I fall below the break-even point, if I sell 999 units, I'll have a net operating loss of $30. And every unit I fall short of the break-even point, I incur an additional $30 of operating loss. Let's compare the area of profit and the area of loss for firm Y with firm X's, and we see a much narrower triangle here. And that's because we have a smaller contribution margin per unit. So at the break-even point, at 1,200 units for firm X, if I sell 1,201 units, I'll have net operating income of $15. And for every unit that I sell above that 1,200 unit break-even point, I'm going to add an additional $15 of operating income. So I leverage my operating income at a much lesser rate over here in this area of profit than I did over here. But this is a double-edged sword. Look what happens if I fall short of my break-even point. I only incur, if I fall short by one unit, if I sell 1,199 units, I'll have a net operating loss of $15. And for every unit that I fall short, I add an additional $15 for net operating loss. So I'll incur losses much quicker in firm Y than I will in firm X. So I want you to be aware of this because you may be in a position someday where you're choosing whether to automate your firm or continue using more direct labor, have more of a manual firm. And the issue you want to look at is the economic climate and how susceptible your firm follows economic cycles. So if whatever it is you're selling, if demand goes down sharply in an economic downturn, you might want to choose a cost structure something like this because you're going to be able to weather that economic downturn a lot longer if you're incurring losses at a lesser rate. Whereas this firm is going to incur greater losses a lot quicker. Now, if your firm isn't so susceptible to economic downturns and it tends to ride economic upturns at a greater rate, you may want to choose this cost structure because in good times, we're going to leverage up that profit at a much greater rate. So that's what these graphs can tell us. And I always like to graph this out after I'm done uh, calculating break-even points and all that good stuff, just to get a picture of what's going on with the firm. Just provides one more piece of information to managers.